Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on, on the main line. Tell him, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 Jesus is on, on the main line. Tell him what you want. You can call him up and tell him what you want. of the suffering of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which yeah, is among yes. you, Amen. taking the oversight thereof not by constraint but willingly, yes. not for lurch but of ready, ready mind. Yes. Neither as being lords over God, heritage, but being oh, examples right. to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, he shall receive the crown of glory that faded not away. Amen. Likewise, ye younger, submit right. yourself unto right. the elders. Ye yes. all of you be subject to one another and be clothed with humility. Yes. For God restraineth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Well. Humble yourself, yeah, therefore, yeah, yeah. under the mighty hands of God, yeah. that he may exalt you yeah. in due time, yeah. casting all your cares yeah. to him. Yes. I read to you again 1 Peter chapter 5. May God have a blessing in him to read his word. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. Yes. yes.
He's worthy to be praised of all our of all the praises that's due him. At this time, we're going to ask our children to come to the screen uh, at, at your houses, and we have a presentation for our children this morning. Uh, so here we go. The name of the song is I forgot the name of the song, but anyway, <laughs> all right, let's go with it. children sing along with us
is a day to give you praise through heartache and pain. Through the storm, the storm and through the rain, and through the rain. You were always there for me. Where did I go? I want to thank you, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to thank you, Lord, for being there for me. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Yes, Lord. I remember.
separate us. Separate us. Oh, but my, oh, my grandparents, oh, they stepped in, say, no, we going to take them. Jesus, yeah, all 
all of my burden, all of my burden. Take, them to Jesus. take them to Jesus, I can lead, I can lead. My, burden. my burden, isn't that, oh, all of my trouble, all of my trouble, take them to Jesus, yeah, all of my trouble, I can take them to Jesus, yeah, all of my trouble, take them to Jesus, I can leave, I can leave my, trouble. my trouble, I can leave them there, oh yeah, all of my problem, oh Lord, I take them to Jesus, oh yeah, all of my problem, I can take them to Jesus, Ooh, yeah, all of my problem, I can leave my problem. I can leave them there. Yeah, all of my burden. Take them to Jesus. Oh yeah, all of my burden. I can take them to Jesus. Yeah, all of my burden. Take the new Jesus. Ooh, yeah. I can leave my burden. I can leave them there. All of my burden. Yeah. All of my burden. Talking about burden, y'all. Sometimes weigh me down, yeah. All of my burden, I can always take them to the Lord, yeah. If you have a problem, just take them to Jesus. Take your burden, take them to the Lord, yeah. Cast your care. Upon Jesus, I stop by to tell you, He cares for you, yeah. It makes no difference, y'all, what the world may do, yeah. Woo, yeah. Keep your hand, yeah, in Jesus' hand, yeah. He promised me all. He never, never leave me now. Oh, he's always there oh, to see you through, yeah. The Lord get heavy sometimes, y'all. I, 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 I want to tell you. Just talk to the Lord, yeah. I tell you that he labored all of my burden, all of your burden, yeah. I don't know what your burden may be, y'all, but always stick it to the Lord, yeah. All of my burden, all of my burden, yeah. All of my burden, take them to Jesus. All of my burden, take them to Jesus. Yeah, all of my burden, take them to Jesus. Yeah, I can leave my burden. Isn't that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen.
praise God for uh, our male chorus. Thank God for our male chorus. If you're seated in the sanctuary or even at home, let's give them a hand clap of praise for the songs that they have led us in this morning. Uh, thank God for Brother Richard Davis, who sung that song like it was his last time. And uh, I think we've, we've gotten accustomed and comfortable with uh, the virtual worship experience, but we know if we were in person and it was a fourth Sunday and we sung a, a hot number like that where Brother Edward, the, the entire sanctuary would be uh, giving God praise. So we can do that even at home and even uh, as we worship even right now. So let's give God another hand clap of praise uh, for our, our men and our band uh, who sung so eloquently this morning. I uh, want to thank God for uh, our pastor, our assistant pastor, Pastor Timothy Johnson, uh, for giving us this opportunity uh, every fourth Sunday to come before you uh, and uh, let you know what it is that the Lord has to say to us. Uh, before we jump into the word this morning, I would like to just acknowledge um, this month does represent um, clergy appreciation. Um, so we wanted to do something not major, but something just small for our clergy here at the Good Shepherd Church. Uh, we have uh, seven ministers, including our pastor and our assistant pastor, uh, Ramel Ellison, myself, Sean Aguilard, Chris Anderson, and Linton Jason. Uh, and we wanted to present them something. So uh, I believe they have it on the screen where you guys can see it at home, but they are uh, some mask that say clergy on them with the Bible, and uh, each one of them has their personal names on them. And then they also have a mug um, with their names on them, with a mask, and it says Clergy Appreciation 2020. So we just wanted to uh, show our appreciation to all of our Reverend clergy uh, who preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ here at this local church body. Uh, you guys can pick up those gifts. They'll be here at the church office. You can call, email uh, to see when the office will be open so that you can get your gifts. Hope you're ready for the word of the Lord today. It comes out of the book of 1 John, 1 John chapter 3. Uh, before I read, we will pray. We'll read the first two verses of 1 John chapter 3. And we'll see what the Lord has to say to us in this day. Lord, we thank you again for another day. Another day to witness your grace, another day to witness your mercy, another day to witness your, your favor, your kindness, your gentleness, your long suffering, suffering. Lord, everything that we receive as a consequence of being in relationship with you, we thank you for that. Lord, we, we know that Everything we've done up until this point has not been quite pleasing to you. So, Lord, we do ask for forgiveness. The things that we've thought, the things that we've said, the things that we've even done, we rush to say that we're sorry. Lord, but we thank you for your Holy Spirit who lives inside of us, who allows us access to your son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins was buried for our sins, but who got up with all power in his hand, because he got up, Lord, he intercedes on our behalf even right now. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask for your forgiveness. Lord, we, we need you. We, we can't live without you. So, Lord, we pray that you would speak like only you can. There's a, there's a world, there's a nation that needs to hear from you. There's a lot of people that are suffering because they don't know you, Lord. So, Lord, I pray that in the only way that you can, that you would allow us as human beings to share your gospel, to preach, to teach, and to live out what it is that you've commanded us to do. Lord, we pray for our members near and far who are, who are sick who are in the hospital, who are recovering, who are just going through life. 
Lord, we pray that you would heal them like only you can, that you would touch their bodies, that you would hold them steady, that you would hold them in the palm of your hand, that you would let them know that even if you don't let this storm pass away, you are still in control of the storm. And because you are in control of the storm, Lord, we trust in you. Allow us to totally rely on you. Lord, we don't take for granted being able to walk into this sanctuary today. We don't take for granted being able to wake up and walk on our own two feet. We don't take for granted being able to feel the air and the wind blowing our faces. Lord, we don't take for granted having clothes to wear, having food to eat, having water to drink. We don't take those things for granted, Lord. We thank you for what we sometimes call those little things because we know there is somebody somewhere that is not able to experience those things. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for what you've done in this week since the last time we've heard from you. But, Lord, we need to hear from you again. Speak like only you can. Allow us to hear what you want us to hear. When we leave out, Lord, that we would leave out saying that we heard from you, that it will allow us to live our lives the way you've called us to be. Lord, it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 1 John chapter 3. First John chapter 3, we'll look at the first two verses. I'm reading from the New International Version. It reads this way. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and that we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Amen. You may be seated. For the time that is I to share together this morning, I'd like to talk from this subject calling to be God's children, the calling to be God's children. As a family of God, we are supposed to be reconciled one to another. We can't let bad feelings fester. We can't let negative thoughts about other persons in the body of Christ and the family of God be harbored in our hearts. God expects that we shall settle things swiftly and once and for all. We should not hold grudges and belittle other brothers and sisters, but we should ensure that because we want to represent God well, that we will get it fixed quick. That is what we want to do. Those of us who really seek to please God, we will fix the fracture fast. We'll make sure that ruptures do not get worse, that sores do not get infected with other negative feelings, but we will ensure that reconciliation takes place. That, my brothers and sisters, is the responsibility of the family of God. That we have to be responsible each to the other, that we have the responsibility to ensure that we are to be reconciled one to another, that God has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. That is our responsibility, but today we speak not about the responsibility with regard to the family of God. Today I want to talk to you about our reality as the children of God. Because one of the wonderful realities, one of the wonderful things about reading this passage of scripture is that John gives to us some wonderful realities that are ours because we're his. That God has given to us some wonderful realities that should not be taken for granted, that should not be overlooked, but should bring joy to our hearts and help us to understand just how God is committed to us. In 1 John chapter 3, when John writes to the believers, he shares with them some pivotal information, necessary information that will help them to understand how much they really ought to appreciate God. And one of the reasons why we worship every single Sunday is not simply to enjoy worship, but one of the reasons why we enjoy worship every Sunday is so that we can appreciate who God is and what God has already done. 
Did you catch that at home? I said one of the reasons why we celebrate God, why we worship together every single Sunday is so that we can literally appreciate who God is and what God has already done. The reason why we sing these songs about God is because we want folks to have a heightened appreciation about God. The reason why we read these scriptures about God is because we want everybody to have a heightened appreciation about God. The reason why we pray to him and believe that not only will he hear our prayer, but he'll answer our prayer is because we want everybody thinking highly about God, having a high estimation about God, a high value of God, a high worth of God. If I had time, I'd tell you, I'd tell you that that's what worship is all about. That's what worship is all about. Worship is about showing how high your value is on your God. So when we come to worship, we don't just come just to showcase our talents in front of one another. We come to worship so we can show just how important God is to each and every one of us. I'm drawn to this passage because John, when he writes this little missive to the believers in the first century church, when he writes this text to them, he literally seems to have such ecstasy, such an ecstatic mindset and ecstatic posture that he cannot keep it to himself. Watch the movements of the verses because these first two verses shares with us some information that I believe might be worthwhile because it will help us to have an even higher value on our God. When I look at this, the Bible says to me, John says to me that we have been called to be the children of God. That in the midst of our biological relationships, that God has called us to a higher experience, and that is to be the children of God. I love this because David makes it very clear that sometimes families, biological families, don't always work the way they're supposed to. Sometimes mothers and fathers disappoint you. But David says in Psalms 27, 10, when, the, when my mother and father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Aren't you glad you have a recourse in your God? That even if mother, father, sister, brother, husband, sister, wife lets you down, you still have a friend that sticks closer than a brother. You still have a God who is on your side, and he will take you up. Watch, watch, watch how John expresses his ecstatic mindset, his ecstatic posture. He says, how great is the love that the Lord, Father has lavished on us. I love the way the NIV reads it. He says, how great is the love that the Father has lavished on us. He has called us to be the children of God. Would you believe, first of all, that our calling to be children of God is rooted in the wonderful love of the divine. That's my first little point, that our calling as children of God is expressed in divine love. That when God looks at us, he not only looks at us, but he shows his love towards us. That God is so committed to you, he's so concerned about you, that every single day of your life, he shows you how much he loves you. See, it's one thing for somebody to say I love you, but it's a whole other thing for somebody to show I love you. And John, when he opens up this third chapter, he says, how great is the love that the Father has lavished on us. King Jimmy says, bestowed upon us. He just put it in our laps. And he says, I want you to know how much I love you. Here it is. I love this. He says, I want to lavish on you with my love. And I love the way King James starts the verse off because this says, behold, how great. John says, wait, pause, take a minute. Don't read past this too fast. I want you to look at this. I want you to gaze upon this. Don't you miss this because this is too good for you to run past it too fast. Behold how great is the love that the Father has lavished on us. I love this. I love the way John writes this because he shows us very quickly that the love of God is, first of all, a paternal love. That's the expression of divine love, that the first of all, the first love is a paternal love. He uses the Greek word for father. When he uses that word father, it does not mean one who just makes a child. That's part of it, but that's not the only thing it means. It means progenitor, the one who initiates this, the one who gets things started. He says that if it wasn't for your father, God, you wouldn't be in here in the first place. He says, let's give credit to whom credit is due. He is our progenitor. He is the one who got us here in the first place. Before your mother ever met your daddy, before they ever thought about bringing my children into the world, God had his mind on you. He is the progenitor. But not only is he the progenitor, it likewise means he's the provider and protector. That God, when he shows his love toward us, he does this 
first of all, by initiating our lives. And then when he initiates it, he protects us and provides us. You want to know why some of us can't wait to get in church in person? Why we can't wait to make it to the sanctuary? Why some of us can't wait for Sunday to come around? Because some of us have gone through so much since the last time we came to church. Some of us have experienced so much since we were here in March. And we realized that if it had not been for God who was shielding us and protecting us and holding us, we wouldn't be in our minds right now. But somebody can testify that he is my protector. And even when my enemy did get his hands on me, he couldn't take me out because God said, I'll let you go so far, but no further. I'm so glad that God stops the enemy dead in his tracks because he is my protector. Anybody know he's your protector? As a matter of fact, the elders of the old said, he shields me, keeps me from danger, seen and unseen. He's my protector. Not only is he my protector, he's my provider, my progenitor, my protector, and my provider. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. I, I, I know some of y'all, I know some of y'all wish y'all had more stuff, and, but, but aren't you glad you got what you got and everything you got comes from God? Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of life. Is there anybody who knows he keeps on providing, he keeps on taking care of you, he keeps on giving you what you need, and then he's so gracious, he'll go beyond what you need, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Abraham ain't the only one who knows him as Jehovah Jireh. There's some folk looking and listening to me who can testify he is my provider. He says it's a paternal love, but not only is it a paternal love, it's a likewise a profound love. Are you still in the Bible? Because in verse 1, that New International Version says, See how great is the love that the Father has lavished on us. He says, let me describe this for you. I'm really not good at describing. I can't really get my arms totally around it. I'll just say, it's great. I, I, I can't qualify or quantify it any better than that. All I can tell you is that God loves is so great, I'll just have to say that it's how great. Because see, how great has no limit, you understand? How great has no cap on it. You can't say this is how great great is because how great just supersedes anything you, else you can think about. But then he says, not only is it great, but then he says, he has lavished it on me. That God is so committed to you and I that every single day of our lives, he lavishes you with a love that is unconditional. I said he lavishes you with a love that is unconditional. Now, I got to say that because that Greek word there is agape, an unconditional love from God. It is the highest form of love that is found. It is the love of God, a benevolent love, a, a love that gives, a love that shares, a love that assists, a love that helps. It literally means that no matter how ugly you act, he's still in love with you. No matter how unlovable you are, he still loves you. No matter how crazy you act, he still says, I ain't going to let you go. I love you too much to let you go. And every day he lavishes on us his love. I love that he just lavishes his love on us. He just pours it out in abundance. That just when you thought you seen the extent of his love, he'll come around the corner and show you, I have much more love for you than I had yesterday. Every time you think he's done more than enough that he would ever do, he does some more. He'll show up on the next day and the next day and show you all over again that he's so in love with you that he got more love than you have seen. Did, did you hear what I just said? I said, your God got more love than you have sin. It don't matter how much sinning you do. And if we put all our sins together, we sure got a lot of sins. Although you got a big Bible in your lap right now and, and you got a big sins in your past, no matter how much sin we do, he's got more love to cover a multitude of sins. The Bible says that this love is so profound that nothing can separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Did you hear what I just said? The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Paul starts it off. He says, who shall separate us from the love of God? And then when he asks a who question, pastor, he gives a what answer. I, I got confused there for a minute. He said, who shall separate us? But then he starts listing the what's that cannot separate us. He said, shall tribulation or peril or nakedness, that ain't no what, that's a, that, that, that ain't no who, that's a what. 
or sword or distress or famine or persecution. He said, no angels, no principalities, no height, no debt, no any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. He said, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus that loves us. And I wonder if there's anybody here today who's grateful that no matter what happens in my life, the love of God is so profound. I, I cannot be separated from his love. It's a, it's a paternal love. It's a profound love. But let me give you one more. It's a proven love. I, I, I said it's a, it's a proven love that your God, my God, our God, every day of our lives proves how much he loves us. Hadn't he proved it to you? I, I, I mean, you don't have to go back too far in your history to testify that the Lord will prove his love to you, that he proves his love every time he wakes you up in the morning. He, he, he proves his love every time he carries you through the day. He, he proves his love every time he rocks you to sleep at night and lets you sleep sweetly, sweetly, sweetly and soundly all night long. He proves his love every time he answers your prayer. He proves his love every time he opens a door that no man can close. He proves it every time he closes a man, a door that no man can open. He proves it every time he shows you favor when you should have gotten what you deserve. He proves it every time he forgives you when you know you done messed up more times than you should have. I got some more proof of it because you still ain't where I want you to be. He proves his love when he said, I'm going to send my son to be born. And he did just what he said he going to do. He proved his love when he said he was going to let his son live 33 years. And he did just what he said he going to do. Do. He proved his love when he said his son was going to die one Friday on a hill called Calvary, and he did just what he said he going to do. He proved his love when he said he was going to get him up on the third day without power in his hand, and he did what he said what he's going to do. So if he got him born, if he let him live, if he let him die, and if he let him get up, you better look because when the Lord comes back and cracks the sky, Jesus is coming back again, and I'm looking forward for the day when we shall behold him face to face in all of his glory. Anybody grateful that he keeps on proving his love? He, he, he proving his love. Coronavirus has killed over 200,000 Americans and here you are sitting, looking and listening at me. He proves his love. Th thank you, Jesus, that our calling as children of God is rooted in the expression of divine love. How great is the love that the Father has lavished on us. In fact, as Augustine said, God loves each of us as if there was only one of us to love. 1 John 4, 8 says, God is love. God personifies love. In fact, if it has to do with God, it has to do with love. There are people who love and respect you, but if they knew certain things about you, they would change their minds about you. God knows everything there is to know about you, yet he loves you anyway. God does not love us because we are valuable. We are valuable because God loves us. Can I push it a bit further? Because not only does he say that our calling is rooted in the expression of divine love, but secondly, he says that our calling as children of God is realized in the establishment of divine legacy. That our calling, he calls us to be children of God. And that our calling is realized in the establishment of divine legacy. Nobody else could call us children of God but God. God sets this up, and he refuses to allow any enemy to take us out of what he set up. We're reading in the epistle of John, but if you read the gospel of John, John says about Jesus, he says that those who are in the Lord's hands, nobody can pluck them out. Those who are in God's hands, nobody can pluck them out. God said, I'm establishing my legacy, and nobody can thwart what I've established. I'm setting it up this way. I'm calling you my children. Watch the next phrase in the New International Version. He says, and that is what we are. Unbelievers cannot fully comprehend the children of God. The reason for this lack of perception is their failure to comprehend God fully. Since they do not know the parent, they do not know the children either. You act differently when you know who you are. When it is what it is, you talk differently. There used to be this fellow that was living in uh, D.C. a few years ago. They called him the president. A at least he was the president. He, he, he walked like the president. He had that swagger working. It don't matter, didn't matter what they said about him. 
It didn't matter what the opinion polls said about him. He said, I am the president. And whatever you say, I'm still going to be the president. I'm going to walk like the president because when you know who you are, it affects the way you live. That's why I'm not concerned about any naysayers and those who are skeptics and those who are doubters. I know who I am because my daddy already told me who I am. And when you know who you are, it affects how you live. John says, John says, that is what we are. And if that wasn't enough, he comes back in verse 2 and he says, now we are children of God. I, I, I want you to see this. I, wa I want you to see how it is written in the Greek language. He says, First of all, we are called to be his children. Secondly, that is what we are. Thirdly, now we are that. Okay. See, John is writing to believers, but he knows that there are unbelievers who are listening in. So when he writes it to believers, he says, I want you to know who you are. We are to be children. That is what we are, and we are that right now. He says it to convince them, but he also says it to convince those who are listening in. They are called Gnostics. That was the heretical teaching that was being ported in the time of the history of the life of the church. And they didn't want anybody who still had issues to think they were equal to the creator. Having spoken to, of their present dignity, he goes on to speak of future destiny. So John has to tell the church and those who are skeptics and doubters that we are to be called or we are to we are called to be the children of God. And that is what we are, and we are that right now. He says, you are that, even though you're not acting like that. He says, God is calling you to be that, though you are not living up to that right now. God has called you to be that, even though you are still working through some stuff that's going to help you look more like that, when that is really what it should be. Can I get one honest person who said, I'm grateful for what he calls me because I know it ain't always what I am right now? Let me, let me put it to you this way. It's a beautiful picture that God places a crown over our heads and he dares us to grow tall enough to reach it. See, because when everybody else is worrying about your past, God is looking at your potential. He said that all other folk are trying to keep you bound to your past, but God said the past is the past. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. He's not interested in your past. He's consumed with your potential. He calls you his child, and he's daring you to start acting like it. He says that each of us are now part of of a divine legacy because we're in Christ Jesus that God has called us to be his children and that is what we are and we are that right now I'm that right now nobody can take my standing away from me you can't rob me of my status the Bible calls me a saint even though sometimes I ain't acting like a saint I don't act like it all the time I don't look like it all the time. I'm not just talking about Stephon Skinner. I'm talking about every last one of us who don't always act like it. We don't always look like it. We don't always resemble it, but that is what God calls us because he sees us what we are even before we become what he's called us to be. Woo, that's good theology right there. He sees what we are. I wish I had one or two folk who can talk to me about Gideon in the wine press. He, he, he's in the wine press in the Old Testament, and God calls him, looks at him. He says, mighty man of Balaam. He's in the wide press hiding from his enemies. But when God looks at him, he calls him a mighty man of valor. He ain't acting almighty. He doesn't look like he got much valor. But God says, God sees the end at the beginning. And he sees what you're about to become even before you becoming. Can anybody else testify he saw the best in me? When everybody else saw the worst in me? Anybody grateful that what he calls you is what you are? Nobody what anybody else can say? There's one more thing. One more thing in the text, and I think it might help us as we understand that we've been called to be a child. First of all, we need to understand that this calling is rooted in the expression of divine love. That this calling is likewise the establishment of the uh, divine legacy. But as I close this little message, this calling of ours is revealed in the expectation of divine likeness that our calling as children of God is revealed we see it more and more and we'll see it more and more in the expectation of divine likeness it's not exactly what it's gonna be yet 
that this is just a piece of my story. But the final chapter has not yet been written. Because if you still have your Bible open, you'll remember, you'll remember that verse 2 says, we are not yet what we're going to become. It has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But one thing we know, that we will be like him and we will see him as he is. That this is temporary. But there's something that's eternal that's on the way. My past has been covered. My present is being taken care of. But my future looks a whole lot better than my past or my present could ever look. Can I go vernacular on you? You ain't seen nothing yet. What's coming is better than what's been. Let me go Bible on you. Let me go Bible you. The Bible says eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into your hearts of men and women the good thing that God has in store for them that love him. I wish by faith that you could just testify to yourself that this is not the end, that God has something greater for me a little bit further. We will see him as he is. Even though we are presently God's children, we do not yet fully reflect his image as we shall. However, when Jesus Christ appears and we see him, we will experience full transformation and be like him. Evidently, just seeing Jesus Christ will fully transform us physically and spiritually. Can, 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 you, think, can you think of anything more wonderful than seeing Jesus? We have sung about him. We, we, we've talked about him, we've studied about him, we've communicated with him, but the grand climax will be when we see him. He says, I have become, but at the same time that I have become, I am becoming. I hope that you're not so satisfied with your Christian maturity because you show up on a Sunday morning that you're not trying to become. I hope you're not so comfortable because you done learned 12 verses of scripture that you still not trying to learn a little bit more. I hope you're not comfortable because you done gotten the choir and got you a little title at the church and you're not, a, you're not worried about being in the process of ever becoming because we are expected to be in his divine likeness. After a while, I'm going to look just like him. After a while, I'm going to act just like him. After a while, I'm going to be just like him. When, when, when people see me, or when people see my father, they, they, they say, y'all are twins. Years ago, he, he lost all that weight, and, and, and we really started looking alike. I, I, I got his DNA. He put something on the inside of me, and it can never be taken away from me. And every time I wake up in the morning, every year I go through life, I will consistently look more and more like my daddy. And would you believe that every one of us, if we stay connected to the creator, one of these days we will see him face to face and we will look at him face to face and we'll be able to say, Daddy, I look just like you. It's been a long time coming, but Daddy, I've had some storms and some rains. I've had some ups and some downs. I've had some pain and some problems. But as I stand in your presence, I look just like you. And the Bible says we shall see him just as he is. He's conforming us to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. We are not yet what we shall be, but we shall see him. And when we see him, we shall see him just as he is. So please be patient with me because God is not through with me yet. But when God gets through with me, I shall come forth like poor gold. I'll walk the way he wants me to walk. I'll talk the way he wants me to talk. I'll live the way he wants me to live. I'll do what he wants me to do. Thank God that I'm called to be his child. Lord, we thank you today for this divine calling. Thank you that we can call you father because you called us children. Thank you for showing how much you love us by allowing your son Jesus Christ to die. Lord, we sing it. We say it as a cliche, but Lord, if you don't do anything else, you've already done enough. You proved your love of, to us when you allowed your son to die. Lord, we thank you today. 
Thank you that we're in relationship with you. Thank you that we're able to call you daddy. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for providing for us. Lord, there may be one who has heard this message today and does not know you and is not in relationship with you, Father God, is not able to pray and call you Father. Lord, we pray in this feeble message that you would speak to hearts, that you would speak to minds, to let them know that we were once lost, but you found us and you called us your children. You adopted us into your family of love. And Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for this message today. We pray, hope, and trust that one has heard something, one has saw something, one has read something, one has experienced something that would help them draw closer to you. Not only give their life to your son, Jesus Christ, but be a follower of your son. Lord, we pray this prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 For those of you who have heard the message, and you are either sitting in the sanctuary at home or, um, or you're sitting at home and you have not experienced what it means to have the love of God. If you are breathing right now, you are experiencing the love, the love of God. If you woke up this morning, you are experiencing the love of God. If you can hear me, if you can see me, you are experiencing the love of God. If it has to do with love, it has to do with God. We, we only love him because he first loved us. The reason that this happened, that he showed his love, is that he allowed his son to die for our sins. We messed up. We made mistakes over and over again. We still do to this day, and we couldn't get it right. But God said, I'm going to send my son, because I love you so much, I'm going to send my son to die in your stead. I'm going to allow him to take your place. Although you deserve it, although you should die, I'm going to allow my son to die for you. That's how much I love you. And since that day even to this, he, proven, he proves his love over and over again to us. If you want to be in a relationship with that kind of father, you can do that today. Not only be in a relationship with him, but you can follow him. Obey his commands and you can experience what it is that we experience to have joy in your heart. That even if you have trouble and storms and everything going on around you, you can still know that God loves you. If you're at home and you're listening to us, and you'd like to be in relationship with Jesus Christ, you'd like to call God your father. You can simply leave a message. You can call us at 713-672-9847. You can send us a private message. You can leave a comment in the comment box. Someone will be more than happy to reach out to you and share this gospel message with you. We know that we've been doing virtual worship all over the country since March. If you are out of a church home and you are being moved and led to make Good Shepherd your church of choice, we will receive you. Same method, you can leave a comment in the comment box. You can call us at 713-672-9847. Or you can leave us a private message. We pray that you've been blessed up by this message. We pray that God would move on your heart, that you would accept Jesus Christ today, you would allow him to come into your heart, come into your life, so that you can walk with him and talk with him, and that one day, hopefully, you can see him face to face for who he is. Lord, we pray once more and again for those who have heard the message, for those who are contemplating making a decision right now. Lord, we pray that they would trust, they would listen to your voice, they would yield to the Holy Spirit and give their lives to the Lord.
today. There's nothing that you need to do if you're listening to this. You just simply need to let us know that God is speaking to your heart and that you want to be in relationship with Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that you would allow your Holy Spirit to move, that you would speak as only you can, that lives would be changed, that souls will be saved. Lord, at the end of the day, we give you the glory. We love you because you loved us. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Give, Lord, another hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. At this time, it is offering time. Uh, for those who are in the sanctuary, uh, a deacon, if you will, go around and uh, collect those who have offering. For those who are at home, you know what we do. We give online. If you need to get in touch with your carousel leader, do that so that they can uh, pick up your financial contributions. If you're visiting with us virtually and you'd like to give, you can go to gsmbchouston.org and you will see our online giving option or if there's an easier way that you like to give you can inbox us and we can share some information with you but we're just glad that you decided to join in with us today Lord we pray for these gifts we pray for the givers we ask that you would bless those who gave tenfold those who are not able to give, Lord, you know their hearts, you know their desires. Ask that you would bless them and keep them. Ask that you would use these contributions for the ongoing of your kingdom and the magnifying of your name. Lord, continue to bless us according to your will for each and every one of our lives. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We do want to remind you uh, this year uh, in December is our pastor's 30th year anniversary. Pastor and wife 30th year anniversary. Amen. You can clap at home. So uh, our pastor's aid committee will be making uh, various announcements following this Sunday and every Sunday uh, coming up to that date. I believe it's the first Sunday in December. It's the second Sunday in December. It's the first, second Sunday in December. They'll be making the announcements, uh, and you guys can listen in for those to see what the plans will be. Uh, birthdays and anniversaries we have this week. Uh, if you're at home and in the sanctuary, we ask for one power clap. Miss Tina Daniels, Barbara Matthew, Sabrina Wilson, Pam Burton, Selena Harvey, Frank Smith, Sharonda Corbett, and Rory Jones. Happy birthday to each and every one of you. And it look, looks like we have a double celebration. Uh, the day after her birthday, uh, Miss Barbara Matthew and her husband Carl will be celebrating 19 years of marriage. Happy anniversary to you all. Amen. I believe that's all of our announcements for this morning. Uh, we will have Sunday school starting at 1025. 1025. Um, men will be on Facebook Live and YouTube Live and conference call. Women will be on conference call. Uh, so we do ask that you would join in with us. Um, Bible study resumes this week. Uh, on at This morning, I'm sorry, in the mornings at 1130 and also at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, we can all stand at this time and we will give the benediction. Oh, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Lord, thank you for what you've done this morning through each one of your vessels. Lord, through the band, through Warren, through Judy, through Ken, through Damon. Thank you for what you've allowed them to do. Lord, through our men who sung so eloquently, thank you for the songs that they've raised to you. Thank you for the scripture 
that has been read and rendered. Thank you that thank you for the prayers for allowing us to be able to talk and communicate with you. Lord, then thank you for your preach word. Uh, thank you for allowing us to hear from you. Lord, thank you for allowing us to see how much you love us, to see how much you've proven your love, how often you've proven your love. Lord, forgive us for sometimes taking it for granted. But Lord, we ask that you would continually be glorified in and through us, that we would go out every single day and show people that we know that this love is so profound that this love is unlike any other love, that this love is unconditional, that you loved us first, and you loved us by sending your son, Jesus Christ. So allow us to live our lives in a way that we know that we have the freedom to love each and every person that we come into contact with. Thank you for being our father. Thank you for calling us children. Thank you for this divine legacy. Thank you for setting this up. Thank you for setting it up where you're the only one that can call us your children. Lord, we pray for our Sunday school hour. We pray for our members, both near and far. We pray again that you are satisfied with our worship in this day. Lord, if there's anything that we left out, we ask that you would forgive us. We pray for the next hour that is ours to join together. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.